going to introduce a girl with very nice hair. I personally know her. Um, she is in an American Muslim going college youth and uh, whom we hope uh, will one day negotiate peace in the Middle East. Please join me in welcoming Jasmine Zonneveld. Hi. Okay, so I'm gonna be telling a story about a girl named Paradise. My name is Paradise, here's my story. I was born in Iran in 1989 to a beautiful, supportive family. Although they were Afghanistani immigrants, my parents always worked hard to make a comfortable life for us. They always encouraged us to explore our interests, become educated, and fulfill our dreams. Although this was amazing advice, I didn't fully realize how important it was for a woman to be educated until I reached high school. Since my parents were immigrants, we didn't have a government ID card, which made it difficult to complete my studies. After a long year hiatus, I completed high school and was ready for college, which I couldn't attend in Iran because of my family's citizenship. Wanting me to continue my education, my family moved back to Afghanistan. Although it was nice being back, I eventually began to feel exiled from my motherland. People made fun of me for being Iranian, and I had to restart my education from the 10th grade because my Iranian certificates were not recognized by the Afghanistani universities. It was a tough adjustment. Eventually, I took a job as a secretary at Herat University. In 2008, I decided to forego that position to pursue my passion for music. Music was a big part of my life since childhood. My father and brother used to play instruments together as my sisters and I sang with them. I also met my fiance that year and we supported each other in our mutual love for music. We formed 143BN Music in August 2008, thus launching our mutual career. It was a huge challenge to get things started. We had problems finding a producer and a recording studio, and it was very dangerous for me to go out to the studios when we found them. Herat is a very conservative city, and most women are still forbidden from many activities. Around that time, I started working with human rights organizations in Herat, where I dealt with many stories about women's problems and domestic violent, violence. Meanwhile, I continued studying at home and was able to pass the school examinations to graduate high school. After some research, we found a friend who was willing to help us record at a studio. I was always going back and forth between my home and the studio, but after a while, my neighbor caught on to what I was doing. One day, he accosted me and my little brother and started beating us and calling us very bad names. I started to fight back in self-defense while the other neighbors watched as though they were in the movies. After that, we decided to move from that neighborhood and establish ourselves elsewhere. In 2010, my fiance and I went to Tajikistan where we recorded more than eight songs and four music videos. While there, I kept hearing about violence against women in Afghanistan around the world, so I decided to dedicate a song to Afghanistani women. Together, my friend, fiancé, and I released Faryad Zan, Women's Shout, in March 2012. In 2013, we decided to move back to Afghanistan where we produced another song dedicated to victims of domestic violence. The song was based on the true stories of my own relatives and women. It was one of the riskiest things I had ever done. After the song was released, even women were insulting me on the streets. It became dangerous to live in Herat, so we moved to Kabul and started a new life. There, over the next two years, we won four awards. UN Women, the Afghanistan Rumi Awards, the ATN Awards, and the World Rumi Music Awards. Over the same time period, I used to receive threats by phone because some individuals didn't approve of my lifestyle and the message I conveyed through my music. Because of these security problems, I could only leave home for concerts and events. Most of the time, we hired a private taxi to transport us. To be safe from attacks, we had to go to high security areas, but these areas were expensive and were frequently targeted by the Taliban. Despite these threats, my fiance and I didn't want to give up our dreams. We worked on two music videos, which were released in 2014 and 2015. It was really hard and risky, but God help us get it done. Around that time, a girl named Farku Handa was publicly beaten to death because a mullah had accused her of burning a Quran. Although the incident made my family fear for our safety, I didn't want to give up. I didn't want to change myself and give in to the demands of others. My fiance and I persevered with our art. Eventually, I came to the heartbreaking conclusion that the best way to move forward with my career was to leave Afghanistan. I moved to Germany where I could freely be a voice of all the voiceless women and men of my country. 
I firmly believe that music and art can inspire change. I remember once in Afghanistan, I wrote a message to my fiance saying, thank you so much for your art. Because of your music, my father let me go to school and continue my education. It was a dream come true. My music had made someone's life freer and happier and better. Today, I live in Germany with my fiance. Although we're back at square one, we are working very hard on our music and we, will, and we will never give up on using our work to make a world a better place. This is my story. My name is Paradise.